Thank you. And let me yield now to Mr. Blumenauer. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. I, I really appreciate this. And I found the conversation here to be, to be very useful. And I think you are highlighting the wide range of issues that are on people's minds. I, I hope there is an opportunity to continue it. Um, Mr. Botticelli, how many marijuana overdose deaths were there in the most recent year you have available? Uh, to my knowledge, I don't know if there have been instances of specific overdose related well, now you deaths. You talked about marijuana deaths, and I, I, so I, wanna, I want to be clear. I'm trying to trap you. No, no. How many marijuana deaths have there been in the last five years? So, so if, you're refer if you're referring to overdoses, uh, I, I'm not sure of those numbers. If you're referring okay, to then fatalities. Stop, then I would like to have you supply us with how many overdose deaths there were. Because I have heard from experts that, whose judgment I respect that they don't know of any. So that would be really important for you to provide, at least to me, if not to the committee. What is more dangerous and addictive, methamphetamines and cocaine or marijuana? So, you know, I, I don't think anyone would dispute the fact that there is relative uh, uh, toxicity uh, related to those drugs. You know, what but, I ask but I'm afraid. What's, what's, but I'm, more, what's more dangerous and what is more addictive? Uh, 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 you know, cocaine this, and meth or marijuana? Mm -hmm. uh, Pretty simple. I, I think that conversation uh, uh, minimizes the harm. No, I'm not trying to minimize the, the harm. I want to know which is more dangerous and addictive. I, you know, again, I go, I go back as you a don't public, know? as a public health person. You know, one of the things that we look at is not what's the relative risk of one drug. Okay. Of a, against Let me just another. say that I think that your equivocation right there, being unable to answer something clearly and definitively when there is unquestioned evidence to the contrary, is why young people don't believe the propaganda, why they think it's benign. If a professional like you cannot answer clearly that meth is more dangerous than marijuana, which every kid on the street knows, mm -hmm. which every parent knows, mm -hmm. if you can't answer that, maybe that's why we're failing to educate people about the dangers. I don't want kids smoking marijuana. I agree with the chairman. But if the deputy director of the Office of Drug Policy can't answer that question, how do you expect high school kids to take you seriously? So, so, Representative, I didn't mean to be disrespectful, and I didn't mean to indicate that there, uh, that there is not, that is not different degrees of toxicity associated with different drugs. I asked drugs. what was more dangerous. You couldn't answer it. No. And I just want to say that you, sir, represent what's part of the problem. Let me go a little further. So, sir, that's Let's exactly not what I'm what's, saying. What kills more people, tobacco or marijuana? I, you know, there's, there's been a fair amount of tobacco-associated deaths. The, the, my, my challenge and the reason I'm hesitating about answering the questions as it relates to relative risk is I think many that, times that, that conversation gets distorted, I'm that there is no to, risk. I'm that not there's, trying to trap you. No, no, no. But, but this is why, Representative, no I don't want to be disrespectful. Let me, let me suggest that your inability to answer me whether tobacco or marijuana is more dangerous, again, is part of the problem. Mr. Connolly documented very clearly that we have been able to drop dramatically tobacco use. And it kills more people than marijuana, if you don't know that. But we've been able to drop that without locking people up without arresting. I think this administration has seen three to four million people arrested for marijuana since it's been in office. Mm -hmm. uh, and know. yet we've been able to drop tobacco use without being coercive. We've, used, we've, been, we've been using fact-based advertising and we've focused our efforts on things that matter rather than things that don't work. Mm -hmm. And I'd respectfully suggest that you and the department take a step back 
if you're concerned that somehow people think marijuana is benign, that part of the reason is that drug professionals can't communicate in ways that the rest of America does. So, so I appreciate your being here, and I welcome any written follow-up to my questions. So, so I'm not trying to trap you, uh, but this I'm is not very discouraged by your inability to answer questions. So, so, so let me tell you, this morning, I spent uh, the bulk of my morning with a number of parents from across the country who are doing everything they can do to prevent drug use, and particularly prescription drug use, and many of them whose kids have died of an overdose. And I asked them, what more can the federal government be doing in terms of preventing substance use and preventing the tragedies? They, and they told me they cannot understand why states are moving to medical marijuana and legal ma medical marijuana. They cannot understand it because they understand from a very acute level the message that legalization sends them. And these, these are, so this is not from a bureaucrat in Washington. These are from parents who struggle on a daily basis and have been devastated by addiction and their kids. And they understand, they understand in a very dramatic and real way that legalizing marijuana sends the absolute wrong message to our youth. 